Hello, you're watching Much Ado About Something and I'm Donna. Well, today we're in my bathroom again and I'm going to change the shower curtain. If you remember, a while back I went to the uh, Dollar General Tractor Supply and Goodwill and I made a video that's the Dollar General Tractor Supply and Goodwill haul. Well, in that video, I bought this shower curtain, which is a waffle weave shower curtain. And I was so excited about it. The manager wanted $10 for it, and I was going to put it back because shower cur curtains are usually $3. But the cashier called the manager, and, and he said he would take $5 for it. Well, this is, I know it sounds nitpicky, and you're probably wondering, well, why wouldn't she just go ahead and pay the $10? And this is why. It's, it's instances like this that make me not want to pay that much for a used shower curtain. Now, when I brought this home, of course, I immediately took it downstairs and put it in the washing machine, but I didn't dry it. I brought it up here and hung it up wet so it could dry on the hooks. And that's how I do all of my shower curtains. I dry them hanging on the hooks, and that way I know they won't shrink, especially the 100% cotton ones. Now, I did read on this tag, and it was 100% cotton, so I wanted to make sure that I took the proper care to keep it from shrinking. But because I bought this second hand at the Goodwill, it had already shrunk. So that's probably why they donated it. While it's a beautiful shower curtain, and I, I just love the look at it, I love the texture of the waffle weave. And it didn't have any stains. You know, it was really clean. It washed up really good. But this is the thing that happened with it. When Donald went to take a shower the no that night, he gets in here and he closes it on this side. And he tries to close it on this side. But it was too short. It wouldn't go all the way across the rod. Let me get inside and I can probably show you that better from the inside. So if you close it on one side, the, the uh, shower curtain had shrunk so much that it wouldn't close here on the other side. I don't know if you can see it for the kids' toys. But it's about six inches too short. So this shower curtain had shrank. Well, I discovered this. I, I, I wanted to take a shower first so that, you know, I can make sure everything was okay with this thing. But Donald got in the shower before I did, so he was like, he got out of the shower and he came out and he said, that shower curtain's got to go. And so now I know why. It's because it's too short. Well, I've picked out one of my, my standbys that I like. This little cotton shower curtain that's got, uh, it's almost like a twall design on it. It's got this uh, kind of uh, cream background with the leaves and flowers, and then it's got some little bluebirds on it. And I thought it would match the bathroom good. It's a, I have plenty. I have a whole tub of shower curtains. I love to change them out because my, I don't have a window in here. And by changing the shower curtain out, I get to... Um, freshen up the bathroom and give it a, a different look very inexpensively and that's the reason I like to change the, change the shower curtain a lot we don't have a window in this bathroom and I've told you that before when I gave you a tour of this and I've changed the shower curtain in the past and I have it painted dark brown I like it to uh, look kind of earthy and woodsy you know and have natural things in it that's that's the uh kind of the theme in here. I just like, uh, I have a lot of mirrors and you know, things from the butterflies and Queen Anne's, dried Queen Anne's lace there in a little frame. You know, it's not anything fancy. It's just a comfortable uh, little bathroom full of the things that we like to, that I like to live with. The little bottles Donald found me you know, from his home place and from work and, you know, it's just a, a comfortable bathroom, not anything um, high end by any means. I like, a, uh, I like a lot of things. I like a traditional look. My style is a traditional nostalgic cottage and to me, this kind of pins it down for me. I don't have any kind of period. This is not an old house. This house was built in the 80s. The um, beginning 80s so it's you know this is not an 
a real old house as far as having a lot of character like a uh, you know um, different century or anything it's, it's basically just a it was basically just a little uh, development cookie cutter starter house it's a split four year but it's enough for us it's, it you know it met our needs and it still meets our needs I, I don't want anything bigger uh, for me right now to be bigger would just be more to maintain and it's uh, you know I've got an empty nest now so I don't need anything really big bigger this bathroom fits our needs and of course the kids have their toys and stuff my little grandkids when they stay over they still get to play around you know this is the bathroom where our family was raised uh, we have three children and they, of course they've grown and gone and have families of their own but this is the bathroom we shared when they were growing up and uh, it's never been a big deal I do I would like to fix it up but get I've got a new floor for it um, that's David's little potty seat that he puts on he's three years old so he falls through that big commode so we He's got that little potty seat there, and we hang it up there when he's finished. Donald made that shelf. I've got uh, this bathroom painted dark brown and then a white wainscoting under the chair rail. And Donald made that shelf, and I like the rustic look of it. I love a rustic look. It just is what feels homey to me. But he, we do have a new floor uh, to put down in here. And Donald is going to do that uh, when he takes his staycation coming up soon. We're going to hopefully get this new floor laid, and uh, it's, it's not anything fancy either, but it's got a lifetime warranty, and I think it'll meet the need. It's just a darker looking floor. Uh, it looks more like real wood. It's a peel and stick. It's not anything real expensive, but um, it does have a lifetime warranty, and I think it'll be good enough for what we need it for well back to changing the shower curtain I'm gonna climb up on this ladder I know last time when I changed the shower curtain um, you know I, I didn't have that great of a view for you so I'm gonna put the camera up here on top of the cabinet here but we'll put you in the loofah sponge bucket <laughs> But I wanted to show you before I started when I changed the shower curtains I always put two shower curtains on the end holes and the end grommets of the of each uh, shower curtain and I do that because uh, that's where you wear and tear on your shower curtain usually results sometimes you may tear a shower curtain of course this has a grommet and I don't usually use shower curtains that tear easily but um, if you'll put two shower shower rings curtain rings in your end shower curtain it will uh, prevent a lot of tearing on your shower curtain I, I've always done that you'll have to buy two packs of hooks uh, to do that but it, to me it's worth it I know a lot of people are not even messing with shower curtains anymore they have glass glass enclosures and and so a shower curtain is not a big deal but I love the softness of a shower curtain and and the prettiness and the fact that you can change it if I just had a glass enclosure here it would be it would look way too modern and it would be a lot to clean the glass would be a lot harder for me to clean and it uh, wouldn't be as soft I couldn't change it as often as I do now so I enjoy having a shower curtain even if it's an old-fashioned concept I don't know I still it's just it's what I prefer I have friends that feel the same way and so they've added a shower curtain even though they have um, glass they they have their glass enclosure and they have a shower curtain on the outside of it just to add the say the softness so i don't guess i'm alone in that in that regard
that's the thing about buying second hand. I love to buy second hand because I love to support like the thrift store I go to. I love to go there and shop. I have a list of things that I need. Say if I need a shelf or a storage bin or something for the grandchildren as a backup here at my house. I love to go to the thrift store and buy those things because I love to support that thrift store. It feeds hungry people in the neighborhood and all the money that you spend there from, you know, you're buying things that have been donated. It helps to feed the community. It's good for the community. And not only do I like to buy it because I, I love to support what that stands for, I also love to buy secondhand because I simply love the idea that it's the ultimate way to recycle. You know, back in the old days, people just used things until they fell apart. And then, um, you know, if, if you couldn't use it, they always gave it to somebody that could. It was a different attitude than what uh, is in general, that's generally accepted now. Now, maybe buying used is not for everybody, but it is the ultimate way to recycle. Instead of filling the landfill with something that is perfectly, still perfectly good, you're finding a use for it by donating it, and maybe somebody that needs it can, can purchase it. Even in this case where I bought this shower curtain and it's not working out for me, I can still use this shower curtain to make something else with. There's a lot of people that don't have the time nor the interest to do that, and that's okay. But just realizing why some people do it, I know many, many people that shop this way and for the exact same reasons that I do. Well, this is the new shower curtain that I've put up. Well, it's not new, the one I had, but it's a different shower curtain. And it's the one that has the twall like print with the little blue birds on it. And it fits good with the theme of the bathroom. You know, I don't have a window. That stained glass window is for decoration. I bought that at a friend's antique store. And Donald cut it down. It was uh, twice that big. And he cut it in half. And I hung half of it in here just to uh, add interest. And because I love old things. And the bathroom is painted brown. So this little sh uh, shower curtain just matches in here. And I've got the the blue throw rug right now or bath mat so that looks perfect with the little blue birds since there's not a window in here you might hear a fan in the background we have fans in almost every room of our house because you know you're in here taking a shower uh, you're producing moisture and there's no window in here it can be stuffy in this little bathroom so we always make sure we have a fan it's actually in the kids playroom but when you open this bathroom door, it blows in here and it circulates the air in the bathroom. And what I always try to do, here's another tip, is just to leave your shower curtain in the middle and leave the two sides of your, your shower, you know, your shower curtain, put it in the middle and leave the two sides open. That way air can circulate around in there and you don't have anything molding and mildewing as easily it can dry out really good and that's why we we don't we very rarely have any kind of mold or mildew in this bathroom it's easy to clean because the circulation of the air you know keeps moisture from settling and anything like that from growing so that's a good tip me and Donald, Donald learned that in the apartment business and I learned that in the cleaning business and when I used to clean I always left the shower curtain like this and the bathroom fan on so that the air could circulate around. And that's just a good tip in general if you're having problems with moisture in your bathroom is to leave your shower curtain like this and make sure you have a fan, some kind of good circulation that can dry out that moisture so that you're not having a, a mold or a mildew problem. Well, I'll have to find a different purpose for this waffle weave shower curtain that didn't work, maybe some pillows or, or even cut off the shower end and make a, a throw or use it as a tablecloth. I'll have to repurpose that into something else since it's not useful as a shower curtain. But hey, it was worth a try. It was just $5 and I think there's at least $5 worth of good material here. So I'll wash this back up and uh, and, and recycle it, reuse it for something else. 
how to spray this air freshener. I love the grapefruit and basil, basil and grapefruit air freshener that I made. I also have a video on how to make that, and I love to smell that. It just freshens everything up. I've changed that shower curtain, gave it a different look, and Donald can at least close it when he showers tonight. <laughs> so I feel better about it. I hope you found some value in this uh, video. I hope there was something that you could take away from it and say, hey, you know, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll try that. Or at least was entertained by it. It was a pleasure to uh, share this with you. I hope you have a good day. And like always, until next time.